In the Appalachian Mountains, deep in the mist-shrouded woods, an ancient god slumbers, hungry for blood. The forest watches, and it remembers. Like, subscribe, and comment below with your thoughts on the tale. Let's begin the story. Emily's hand instinctively rested on her belly, feeling the faint flutter of life within. She was six weeks pregnant, and only Mark knew. The news had been a secret they'd shared in whispered conversations late at night. Their dreams for the future, growing with each passing day. Now, as they stood on the edge of the Appalachian Mountains, about to embark on a journey into the heart of the hollow, Emily couldn't shake the unease that settled over her like a shroud. You sure you're up for this? Mark asked, concern lacing his voice. He was tall, with a strong, steady presence that had always made Emily feel safe. His dark hair was tousled from the long drive, and his hazel eyes were filled with love and worry as they searched hers. Emily smiled, trying to mask her apprehension. I'll be fine. It's just a hike, right? Besides, we've got something to celebrate. She gently squeezed his hand, the engagement ring on her finger catching the light. Sarah and Jake, their closest friends, were already unloading the gear from the back of the SUV. Sarah was bubbly and energetic, with a penchant for adventure that often got her into trouble. Jake, her boyfriend, was the opposite, cautious and methodical, always thinking three steps ahead. The four of them had been inseparable since college, their bond only growing stronger over the years. Come on, you two lovebirds. The mountains won't climb themselves, Sarah called out, grinning as she adjusted the straps of her backpack. This is going to be epic. Jake rolled his eyes, but smiled fondly at Sarah. Just don't get us lost, okay? I don't feel like spending the night in a bear's den. The group set off, the trail they followed, winding through dense, towering trees, the air thick with the scent of pine and earth. Emily could feel the baby growing inside her with every step, a tiny life that made everything feel more real, more urgent. As they hiked, Emily's mind wandered back to her childhood, to the stories her great-grandmother had told her about the hollow and the cult that once thrived there. She had always dismissed them as old wives' tales, but now, as she walked deeper into the forest, the tales felt disturbingly real. Do you ever think about the stories your great-grandmother used to tell? Mark asked as they hiked. About the hollow? Emily nodded, glancing at the shadows that seemed to stretch deeper into the forest as the day wore on. Sometimes. She was so adamant that it was a dangerous place, but I always thought it was just, you know, old superstition, something to keep kids from wandering too far. Still, it's kind of eerie, isn't it? Mark mused. I mean, here we are, walking into the very place she warned you about. Yeah, Emily replied, her voice tinged with uncertainty. But we're together, and that's what matters. They continued on, the conversation shifting to lighter topics, their plans for the future, the wedding they were already beginning to plan, and the baby that would soon change their lives forever. But as the day wore on and the shadows lengthened, the forest seemed to close in around them, the trees growing denser, the path harder to follow. When they finally made camp, the sun was dipping below the horizon, casting the forest in a dim orange glow. They sat around the fire, eating their hastily prepared dinner and chatting about the hike. But as the darkness deepened, so did the sense of unease. Does anyone else feel like we're being watched? Jake asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Sarah glanced around nervously. I don't know. It's just really quiet, isn't it? Emily's heart skipped a beat. She had felt it too that creeping sensation of being observed, as if unseen eyes were tracking their every move. Maybe it's just the forest, she suggested, 
though her voice lacked conviction. Mark squeezed her hand. It's probably nothing. Let's get some sleep, and we'll head out early tomorrow. As they settled into their sleeping bags, Emily closed her eyes, but the silence pressed in on her, heavy and oppressive. Just as she was drifting off, she heard it, a faint, mournful tune, like a fiddle playing somewhere far off in the woods. Her eyes snapped open, and she held her breath, listening. Mark, do you hear that? She whispered, her voice trembling. Mark stirred beside her, listening intently. But after a moment, he shook his head. I don't hear anything, Em. Maybe it's just your imagination. Emily wanted to believe him, but the tune lingered in her mind, a haunting melody that seemed to echo the stories her great-grandmother had told. She pulled the sleeping bag tighter around her, praying for sleep to come. Morning brought little relief. Emily awoke feeling drained, her sleep plagued by unsettling dreams. In her mind, the woman in white returned, her sorrowful eyes burning into Emily's soul as she stood at the edge of the campfire's light, reaching out as if begging for help. The others looked equally exhausted, their faces pale and drawn. Jake was the first to speak, breaking the tense silence. Did anyone else have weird dreams last night? Sarah nodded, biting her lip. I, I saw shadows moving through the trees, like they were alive. It felt so real, like they were trying to get inside my head. I kept hearing whispers, Mark added, rubbing his temples as if to ward off a headache. Voices, but I couldn't understand what they were saying. It was like they were all around us, closing in. Emily hesitated, then spoke up. I saw someone, a woman, in white. She looked like she was in pain or angry. I don't know, but she felt real, like she was trying to tell me something. Jake frowned, his expression serious. This place is messing with our heads. Maybe we should turn back. Sarah's adventurous spirit flared up. Turn back. Come on, Jake. We can't just give up. We've come all this way. And besides, it's probably just nerves. We're in the middle of nowhere. It's normal to feel a little spooked. Still, Mark interjected, I think we should be careful. Something about this place. It feels off. Reluctantly, they packed up camp and continued on. Their previous excitement now overshadowed by a growing sense of dread. As they walked, the forest seemed to press in around them, the trees closing ranks, their branches twisting into unnatural shapes. The trail they had followed the day before was now barely visible, swallowed by the encroaching undergrowth. By midday, they stumbled upon a discovery that sent chills down their spines a cluster of old, decaying houses, hidden among the trees. The village was eerily silent, the air thick with the scent of rot and decay. The village was an amalgamation of decaying wooden structures and overgrown vegetation. The once vibrant colors now faded to eerie shades of gray and green. The houses, though once charming, were now twisted and warped by the relentless passage of time. Roofs sagged under the weight of years of neglect, their shingles curling and peeling away. Windows, once clear and bright, were now shattered or fogged with grime, their panes framed by cobwebs that hung like ghostly veils. Doors hung crookedly on their hinges, some barely attached, creaking mournfully in the wind. The streets, once neatly paved, were now choked with weeds and vines, their cobblestones hidden beneath a blanket of moss and lichen. In the village square, the centerpiece was an ancient, gnarled oak tree that towered above the surrounding buildings. Its twisted branches reached out like skeletal fingers, casting long, dark shadows over the cracked and uneven ground. The roots of the tree snaked out in all directions, breaking through the stone and earth as if trying to reclaim the village. Around the base of the tree, the remnants of a long-abandoned marketplace lay scattered, rusted stalls and broken crates, their surfaces overrun with creeping vines 
and wildflowers. The chapel, standing at the edge of the village, was the most intact structure, though its condition was far from pristine. The wooden facade was blackened by age and neglect, and its stained glass windows, though cracked and dirty, still depicted scenes of ancient rites and rituals. The chapel's steeple, once a proud symbol of faith, was now a crumbling spire, its bell silent, and its cross barely recognizable under layers of grime and rot. This must be the abandoned village your great-grandmother talked about, Jake said, his voice hushed as if afraid to disturb the oppressive silence. Emily nodded, her eyes wide as she took in the sight. Yeah, but I didn't think it would still be here. It's like they just vanished. Sarah wandered into one of the houses, her curiosity outweighing her fear. It's so strange. It's like they just left everything behind. Emily followed her into the house, the floor creaking underfoot as she moved cautiously through the decaying interior. She stopped short when she saw it, an old yellowed photograph hanging on the wall, the edges curling with age. In the picture was a group of people, all dressed in old-fashioned clothing, their faces serious and somber. And there, standing in the center, was a young girl who looked hauntingly familiar. That's my great-grandmother, Emily whispered, her heart pounding in her chest. She was here. This is where she came from. Mark, who had followed her in, put a hand on her shoulder. Emily! What does this mean? Why didn't she ever tell you? I don't know, Emily replied, her voice trembling. But whatever it is, it's not good. As they continued to explore the village, the pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place. The villagers had made a terrible pact with something in the hollow during a harsh winter, something that had ensured their survival, but at a price. The signs were everywhere, Strange symbols carved into the walls, bones arranged in ritualistic patterns, and ancient books filled with cryptic, unreadable texts. The cult members, the village's long-lost inhabitants and new recruits, were a disturbing sight. Their clothing, a mixture of ragged remnants of old-fashioned attire and hand-woven garments, seemed to blur the lines between the past and present. They wore garments adorned with strange symbols and intricate patterns that were both alien and unsettling. Patterns that seemed to shift and writhe when observed from the corner of one's eye. Their faces, though varied in age and appearance, shared a common expression of eerie calmness mixed with fear. Eyes that once held life now seemed hollow, their gazes vacant yet intensely focused, as if perpetually lost in a trance. These tattoos were often crudely done, the ink sometimes smudged and distorted, yet they conveyed a sense of devotion and fear. The members moved with a disturbing grace, their steps deliberate and measured. In their rituals, they would chant in a guttural, rhythmic cadence that resonated through the forest, creating a haunting melody that seemed to merge with the natural sounds of the hollow. Their voices, though often soft, had a hypnotic quality that could both soothe and terrify, drawing Emily and her friends deeper into their web of darkness. This wasn't just a village, Jake said, his voice tight with fear. It was a cult. They were worshipping something. Something dark. Emily's stomach churned with nausea as she realized the truth. And my family was a part of it. I was a part of it. Mark pulled her into a tight embrace, his voice filled with determination. We'll get through this, Emily. We'll figure it out, and we'll get out of here, I promise. But even as he spoke, the forest seemed to close in around them, the air growing thick with an unnatural, suffocating darkness. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting the village in deepening shadows, Emily's sense of foreboding grew. The oppressive darkness seemed to weigh heavily on her, pressing down on her shoulders, 
making her movements sluggish and labored. They made their way back to the village square, where they had found the old chapel the previous day. The building stood out among the decaying structures, its wooden doors still intact despite the passage of time. The eerie tune from the fiddle had started again, faint but unmistakable, drifting through the fog that had begun to roll in. We need to find out what's going on, Emily said, her voice trembling with a mixture of fear and resolve. We need to understand what's happening here. Mark nodded, his expression grim. Agreed. Let's see if we can find any clues inside the chapel. The group entered the chapel. The interior, dimly lit by the last rays of the setting sun, filtering through the cracks in the walls. The air was thick with dust, and the scent of old wood and mildew filled their nostrils. They moved cautiously through the nave, their footsteps echoing eerily in the silence. At the far end of the room, the altar stood bathed in a one, otherworldly light. Behind it loomed a massive wooden statue of the Horned One, its towering form covered in tree branches and leaves that seemed to writhe and shift as if alive. The creature's black eyes glowed with a reddish hue, and its goat-like legs were intertwined with gnarled roots. The singular horn on its head cast a long, ominous shadow over the altar. This is it, Emily said, her voice barely above a whisper. This is what my great-grandmother was afraid of. Jake's eyes widened in horror. It's enormous. I can't even imagine what kind of power this thing must have. Sarah looked at Emily with a mixture of fear and disbelief. Emily, you knew about this, didn't you? You knew what we were walking into. Emily hesitated, her gaze fixed on the statue. I didn't know. Not everything. But I knew my family was involved in something dark. I never wanted to believe it, but it's all true. Mark took Emily's hand, squeezing it tightly. We need to get out of here, now. Emily shook her head, her eyes fixed on the statue. We can't. The hollow, it's calling us. It's been feeding off our fears, our doubts. We have to do something to stop it. Suddenly, the ground beneath the altar began to tremble. The stone floor cracked and split open, revealing a hidden chamber below. A foul stench wafted up from the darkness, causing them all to recoil in horror. This is where they made their sacrifices, Emily whispered, her face pale. This is where they fed the Horned One. Before anyone could react, the chapel doors burst open and a tall, gaunt figure stepped inside, a man with hollow eyes and a gaunt face, his clothes tattered and stained. His presence was both commanding and unsettling. You're here, the man said, his voice a rasping whisper. The Chosen Ones, the Horned One has been waiting. Emily's blood ran cold. Who are you? What do you want? The man's gaze locked onto Emily. You know what must be done. The ritual, it needs to be completed. Emily's heart raced. She had always feared this moment, but now it was upon her. No, I won't be a part of this. The man's eyes grew cold. You have no choice. The Horned One demands a new leader, one born of its power. The time has come. Before anyone could react, the man lunged at Emily, grabbing her arm with an unnatural strength. She screamed as Mark and the others tried to pull him off, but his grip was like iron. Emily, Mark shouted, desperation in his voice. We need to stop this. The man began to chant in a guttural language, his voice rising in intensity. The ground shook violently and the walls of the chapel groaned as if in agony. The air grew thick with the stench of decay and death. Emily's mind raced, and she remembered the stories her great-grandmother had told her. The Horned One was a deity of the forest, ancient and powerful, feeding off the fear and sacrifice of its followers. And now, it was demanding more, a new leader to ensure its continued reign. No, Sarah cried out, her voice breaking. 
We have to get her out of here. But Emily knew it was too late. The Horned One's power was too strong, and the ritual had begun. She looked at her friends, her heart breaking as she realized what needed to be done. I'm sorry, Emily whispered, her voice choked with emotion. But it has to be this way. She turned to the man, her eyes filled with resolve. If the Horned One is to be appeased, then we need to offer sacrifices. My friends, they'll be the ones. Mark's eyes widened in shock and horror. Emily, no. But it was already too late. The Horned One's power surged forth, enveloping Sarah and Jake in a swirling oh. vortex of darkness. Their screams echoed through the chapel as they were pulled into the void, their bodies disappearing into the chasm below. The man's chant grew louder, and the Horned One's roar filled the air, a triumphant cry that shook the very foundations of the chapel. The darkness closed in around Emily, the power of the Horned One filling her with a cold, all-encompassing numbness. The ground trembled, and the walls of the chapel began to collapse. Emily felt herself being pulled into the void, her body merging with the Horned One's will. She was no longer herself. Her mind and soul had become one with the ancient deity. Nine months had passed since the ritual. The forest had quieted, but the hollow's presence remained an ever-looming shadow. Emily's pregnancy had been both a burden and a source of secret anticipation. The baby she carried was no ordinary child. It was the vessel for a new deity, a part of the Horned One's eternal plan. The forest was now a place of eerie stillness, the trees standing as silent witnesses to the birth of the new deity. Emily had been led back to the chapel, her place of torment and transformation. She lay on the altar, her body weakened from the strain of pregnancy and the rituals that had consumed her. Mark stood beside her, his face pale and filled with a deep, heart-wrenching sadness. He had tried to protect Emily, but the power of the Horned One was overwhelming. He had been forced into submission his will eroded by the cult's influence. I'm so sorry, Emily. He whispered, tears streaming down his face. I tried to protect you, but it's too late. The cult, the horned one. Everything was set in motion long before we arrived. Emily reached out, her hand trembling as she touched Mark's cheek. I knew. From the beginning. When I was a baby, they told me I would end up back here, no matter what choices I made. It was all part of their plan. Mark's eyes widened in horror. You knew? Why didn't you tell us? Emily's voice was weak but steady. I hoped we could find a way out. I didn't want to believe it. But now, now it's too late. As Emily's labor began, the forest seemed to pulse with anticipation. The trees whispered and groaned, the branches shifting in a rhythm that mirrored Emily's contractions. The Horned One's presence was palpable, its power seeping into the very air around them. The cult members, gathered in the shadows, chanted in an ancient language, their eyes fixed on Emily with a mixture of reverence and fear. They believed that Emily's sacrifice and the birth of the new deity would secure their place in the Horned One's favor. Emily's cries <laughs> echoed through the chapel as the pain of childhood <laughs> took hold. Mark stood by her side, helpless his face contorted with anguish. The forest seemed to respond to her suffering, the shadows growing darker, the air heavier. Finally, with a final, guttural cry, Emily gave birth. The baby was small but radiant, its eyes glowing with an unnatural light. As the child was placed on Emily's chest, she looked at it with a mix of awe and despair. The Horned One's plan had come to fruition. But Emily's strength was failing. The blood loss and exhaustion from the ritual had taken their toll. She looked at Mark with a sorrowful smile, her voice barely a whisper. Take care of our child, even if you can't save me. Mark tried to speak, but his words were choked with tears. I don't know if I can. Emily's eyes closed, her body growing limp. She took her final breath, her life slipping away as the Horned One's power surged through the newborn. The baby's cry filled the chapel, 
a haunting sound that seemed to echo through the ages. With Emily's death, the ritual was complete. The Horned One's power was renewed, its influence spreading through the forest. The cult members, now fully devoted to their new deity, began their new rituals with a sense of grim satisfaction. Mark, broken and defeated, held the baby close. The child, now the new vessel for the Horned One's power, was the key to the cult's continued strength. The forest remained a place of darkness and fear. The hollows call, echoing through the ages as the cycle of sacrifice and renewal continued. 